Hi, and thank you for listening to Dream 10X Radio, where we interview people attempting to live extraordinary lives. Our twofold purpose is to both direct and inspire people bold enough to do the same. Dream 10X. Face your fears. And make your life count. Oh yeah. Hey, it's your boy JC. Welcome to the Dream 10X podcast, episode 63. And welcome! <laughs> How are you guys doing? <laughs> it's kind of dead there for a minute. <laughs> Yeah, come on, you guys are going to participate. <laughs> and in this podcast episode, we are going to talk about our, we're going to recant our story of how we attempted to paddle across the Molokai Channel from Molokai to Oahu in the M2O paddleboard race. And Cindy has a race on to commemorate, or a hat on to commemorate that race. <laughs> I have the race on my head. <laughs> And uh, just wanted to talk a little bit, you know, I guess provide a, uh, an oral post-mortem on what happened then and uh, to kind of recount that story and just to talk a little bit about it and air our grievances and, and joys and whatever <laughs> that came out from that. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit. I just wanted to share that I'm reading this book called Regenesis by uh, George Church and Ed Regis. And it's a really good book about hacking the human genome to improve human longevity. So you might like this, I don't know. But I recommend books to, oh, and we are pleased to have my son, Matthew Capel, with us on today's podcast. Uh, it's the first time Matthew has ever appeared on any of our podcasts, so yeah. this, is, this, is an un- <laughs> <laughs> this is an auspicious occasion. And so I'm looking forward to hearing some of his take on what it was like for him to paddle the Molokai Channel. Okay, and also I have my talisman Rubik's Cube that's solved right here because this makes me feel like my life is in order and everything is symmetrical and you did not just do that. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's going to mess up the podcast. There's no good luck now. We're going to have to pause so I fix it before we can go forward. It's asymmetrical. Oh, it's going to be crazy. (laughs) You're mean. She's a mean-spirited woman. (laughs) <laughs> film the podcast next week and- <laughs> <laughs> where are you going on that come thing. on we're filming live here <laughs> you have no camera skills <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, there's clearly no there's editing shoot. ever there's no editing <laughs> what we shoot is what we shoot alright let's get into it okay there is a race in Hawaii. It's a paddleboard race, and it's called the Molokai to Oahu Paddleboard Race. And I knew nothing about it prior to this year, absolutely nothing. However, in 2021, we went to Molokai on a vacation. And the reason we went to Molokai is because we kind of had done the other islands. We'd been to Oahu, we'd been to the Big Island, we'd been to Kauai. But I don't think any of us have, neither of us had been to Molokai yet. And Maui's kind of expensive, so we were like, eh, let's try out Molokai. So we went to Molokai. We flew into Oahu on a, on a regular commercial um, big big airliner. And then we took a small puddle jumper. We took the Wiki Wiki, which is just a little bus, um, down the airport to this late, really laid back airport. Uh, not air, you know, little... Terminal. Check, terminal. Little terminal place to get on this little tiny puddle jumper plane. Molecule air. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how it was called? Or no, did I get it? It was Mokulele. 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 I always get it wrong. Mokulele <laughs> Airlines. And it's a little puddle jumper and you take that over uh, from Oahu over to <laughs> Molokai. And that was such a fun flight, I thought. Yeah, and we're just sitting right behind the pilot and you can see the water and the, the mountains and stuff on the islands. And it was really fun. And then we landed in Molokai and there's just hardly anybody there. It's like a really chill island and it's very arid and dry. And I just really enjoyed it. I it had a good feel. The other thing I really like about Molokai is that it used to be, the, it looks like a fish for one. If you look at it on the map, there's a little fin up on the top. It looks you know, like a fish fin on the top of it. And in that fish fin, uh, there is a leper. There used to be a leper colony there. So the history of that place is 
like in the 1800s, all the lepers in, Hawaii, in Hawaii were forced to go live in this leper colony in this little fish fin to the north of Molokai. And the reason they got exiled there is one, because leprosy was very transmittable, it was easy to get, and so they wanted to just like separate people who had the disease as much as possible. And then the other reason why they put them on the north part of Molokai in that little fish fin thing is because area is because um, to the south of that fish fin it was a huge oh, ca canyon wall, a huge mountain wall that was made it almost virtually impossible to get beyond. So once you were placed on that piece of land there, you really were stuck there. You couldn't go anywhere. And so uh, I just thought that was really fascinating and I wanted to learn more about that when we were there and you could take, uh, you used to be able to take a, a donkey ride or um, yeah, donkey ride down the canyon mm -hmm. wall to go see that leper colony. But during, uh, just, just after COVID is when we went there. And so just after COVID, they, they still weren't letting anybody go see the leper colony. So we didn't actually get to do that. We actually didn't actually get to see the leper colony, but um, I did was able to read a book. I, one of the drivers that we had um, when we were on Molokai, one of the cab drivers, had a book in his front seat called The Spirit of Father Damien. And it was about the priest who came to Molokai to help organize that society of leper, lepers and you know create a little bit of discipline in, in, in terms of uh, organizing the society there and helping to bury the dead and organizing the the culture uh, uh, you know, the leper culture there and and trying to make their transition because you're, you're ultimately going to die once you get leprosy at that time helping transition them as peacefully and um, painlessly as possible from life to death and so that he made that his life's work and so it was a really interesting book to read I gave it to Matthew did you read it? about halfway through still. <laughs> still halfway through <laughs> six months later uh anyway so that book really endeared uh, molokai to me even more as i thought it was a really interesting story and so anyway um i really liked molokai i, I don't know if you felt the same way i loved it yeah you loved it mm -hmm. as well it's totally different than the other islands um they don't really like outsiders coming there it's not really a touristy spot mm -hmm. nevertheless uh we really enjoyed our time there. I love the arid environment. It's there's not a lot of water on the west end of the island, and I kind of like that. I like the heat. That's just the way I, way I am. And so I, I think it's a really cool, special place. So having said all of that, um, when I happened upon, I think it was a Facebook post that mentioned the Molokai to Oahu paddleboard race uh, earlier this year. I was really interested in that, uh, primarily because while we were visiting. We went to Molokai Burger, got us some hamburgers, and we had some champagne, and we went out to the West End, and we sat on the beach, and we watched the sunset while we ate our hamburgers and had champagne, and we sat there and thought, man, that would be a really cool body to row across. Mm -hmm. You could probably row across that over to Oahu or swim across it even. It just, it just seemed like it was a doable thing. It mm -hmm. wasn't that far, and you could see Oahu in the distance as the sunset. And it was kind of a cool thing to imagine. And so when I saw this race, the paddleboard race that actually crossed that body of water, I was really intrigued by that. So I, for some reason, I, uh, I really can't explain it other than that. I just really wanted to participate in this race. And so Cindy and I already had planned to row down the Potomac River this past summer. And we even had plans to go out to Tanger Island and then potentially even around the Delmarva Peninsula. And so when I got excited about M2O, that kind of derailed those, that whole plan. I and, know. <laughs> and so we had to figure out a way to make both work. We didn't have to, but I really pushed her to like, come on, let's try to, let's try to figure out both. And so that was a huge challenge in and of itself. Um, one of the big issues was, okay, if we did this Molokai to Oahu paddleboard race and we actually got a paddleboard and we actually were able to train for it, how were we going to get our paddleboard over to Oahu in time for the race? And that it's, logistic was a huge problem. And it's not just that it was a race from Molokai to Oahu. It's a world championship <laughs> race. From Molokai to Oahu. Yeah, and details. we're like, what's a paddleboard? <laughs> Continue. Oh, 
Uh, I know it was stupid. It was stupid in retrospect. However, I just I, I thought we I thought we could do it. I thought we could pull it off. Uh, I wanted to try. I wanted to experience what that body of water was like. I just wanted to be a part of it in some way. And so, uh, the, but one of the big logistical challenges was how do we get our paddleboard over to Hawa Oahu after um, we complete our river row? And so the initial plan for, for the, a long time, a long period, was to finish our, our row, immediately come back home, and then drive the board all the way out to Los Angeles, cross country in the span of two days and ship it out to Oahu and then drive from Los Angeles all the way back to Virginia. And I love that he's worried about shipping the paddleboard when we'd never even been on a paddleboard before. <laughs> well, I figured we could take care of that just by going out on the Potomac River. Now, I and, and we did do a lot of workouts mm -hmm. on, like almost every day we were out working, all three of us were out working out on the Potomac River. And I knew that was a risk because the Potomac River is not the ocean by any stretch. Um, however, you know, it, it, we're, we're on a paddleboard on a body of water. So, I, I, and I knew that, you know, there, were, there could be a huge disconnect there and we may, we may fail. And uh, I didn't really know how to mitigate that risk other than to move us all and to train somewhere uh, near some mm -hmm. ocean somewhere. Yep. So that just wasn't feasible given work schedules and whatever. So mm -hmm. we had to accept that risk and, and give it a try. And so when I ran it by the kids were, I, you know, I, it was a team event and uh, probably if I had signed up solo, that would have been the dumbest thing ever. So I signed up as a three person team, which was probably one of the smart things I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked my kids like, would you guys, want any, any of you guys be willing to do that? Because all three of them love to surf. So I thought, you know, that might be really appealing to them. And so the first one to answer was Matthew. He's like, heck yeah, let's do it. So I signed all three of us up and we, we went for it. And this was like February, I think. April. It, was it April? Yeah. We it was April? It was April. Yeah, we didn't have much time. Oh, so, and we didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I... So I, we applied and we got in and I was as high as a kite. I thought this was going to be so cool. I was so excited. I was more excited about M2O than the river row. Um, and in hindsight, I was much more excited about the river row than I was about M2O. But whatever. You know, that's the way life goes. But um, so we, we got in and uh, the first thing I had to do was source us a quality paddleboard. So I called up Joe Bark in Los Angeles and said... Uh, you know, I introduced myself, said, hey, I'm, we're looking to do this stupid thing. What do you think? And he was like, oh, if, you know, if you can, as soon as you can get on the water, the better. <laughs> you may have a chance. And, and Joe Park has done the M2O like 10 times or whatever. And he's a big name in the sport. He makes, the, he makes boards that most of the people use. I think we need to explain yeah. the paddle board. So it's what paddle boarding is. Yeah. Because it's, okay. uh, so there's paddle boarding. It's that, new to us too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, what most, so it's people, definitely new to them. <laughs> what most people know of paddle boarding is where you have that big flat, you know, huge board and you have, you stand up and you have a paddle and you do a thing and you go down the river and you have beer and a cooler and you're dog on it. So yeah, okay, that's one of the events. And then there's also a foil, which is like a surfboard, a paddle board that goes up and down as a fin on the bottom. So it floats above and those are so fast. What we did was the smartest, another smart move you did, was prone. Are you being facetious? No, you? that was oh, smart okay. to do prone. Yeah, versus stand-up paddleboard, I think. Oh, um, I, I think the stand I could have done the stand-up <laughs> There's no <laughs> way in <laughs> hell I could have done it. <laughs> um, so prone is like a big, round, narrow surfboard, and you lay down, and you do all the terrible parts of surfing. So you never get to stand up on the board. <laughs> And uh, so it's like you're laying down paddling constantly. So it's an amazing shoulder workout. Yeah. And if you have little T-Rex arms and a giant board like me, you go like this. <laughs> so that's what we did is the prone paddle board. Yeah. So um, I had a brief conversation with Joe Bark. I said, this is what we're doing. What do you think? I got his feedback. He's, he seemed to indicate it was doable. I said, let's go with it. Ship us the board. Get it. And he got it to us within a week. 
And then within probably another two weeks, it was warm enough to start getting out on the water. So we started heading out to the Potomac mm -hmm. River almost every day, every day that we could. And just started figuring it out, trying to figure it out, watching videos. And, and he was amazing. Like, you were amazing. You got on your knees right away, and you, like, picked it up so fast. I was so was, impressed. It was harder than I thought it was going to be in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Harder to balance on the Because regular surfboards are much easier than those little things are. Is so it because it's, it's wider? or? Yeah, regular surfboards wider. And it's also not, like, shaped like a canoe. It's oh, regular okay. surfboard just flat. Yeah. yeah, the the prone paddleboard is is a little bit rounder. It's much thicker. It's much beefier. You can there's a lot to grab onto. And it flips over super easy too. Flips over very easily, and you know you watch some of the prone paddleboarders, and when they're to really get the fast times, you have to really get on your knees and like dig deep with your hands to move that board. And standing up or getting up on your knees to paddle is really difficult. And it took us it took us a good while to. Mm -hmm. To figure out that balance on the river, <laughs> uh, doing that on the ocean, we still can't do it on the ocean. Yeah. Like, I don't know how. That, but those guys were out there on the big waves, you know, going all over on their knees, like world just, championship <laughs> race. They were, they were paddling their luggage out on the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> like it was. That nothing. was more impressive than the race. It's true. Yeah, like, wearing a backpack, put a cooler on the front of his board. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to that. Let's get to that. It's okay. So here we are on our second day, getting ready to go out on our second day of practice. We're going to take this rowboat and take our paddleboard and put it out on Pohick Bay. But before we do that, we have to wait for Matthew to show up. Seems like all we do is wait for Matthew. But it looks like he's, he's really getting a hang of it. Oh yeah, he's, he's getting that down good. Rowing stern first is not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now it's Cindy's turn. Let's see what she's got. You know, I uh, I tried to treat it like swimming this time. Yeah. Just no, not butterfly. I couldn't last ten strokes, butterfly. I got my chin up on the blue part. That <laughs> helped. <laughs> yeah, the trick is like trying to. Like my neck is tight afterwards, but find your sweet spot where you can just keep going that's yeah. that's difficult yeah because it I don't know it's hard to like because when you're doing it slow like going over with your shoulders slowly like this is like just as much of a workout as just doing it fast. yeah plus when you're swimming when you're doing the swim stroke your hand hits the water and it slows the boat down and I was like trying to mitigate that and I was just like forget it I'm just gonna like take regular swimming strokes regardless of how fast it's going it goes fast yeah it's surprisingly fast yeah I thought I'd have to like keep up to the robo but not I don't think four miles an hour is gonna be difficult in that no no way it's, it's just, four miles an it's hour just can't how long can you sustain it yeah not for 11 miles I feel like I was going like seven or eight miles. Maybe, you think? Not. maybe not. Maybe that's an over. Well, this boat's probably going one and a half. So, you're probably doing four or five. So, we start training on the Potomac River. And we know that it's not the ocean. And we talk about, well, how can we get some experience on the ocean? Well, we could go to the eastern, sh eastern shore, but we could never really work our schedules to do that. Plus, at the same time, we're built, you know, renovating a boat, trying to get ready for this river row. And yeah, you didn't have a boat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Renovating>. <laughs> what are you talking about? Building the boat. I said renovating, didn't I? Yeah, but it was like three pieces of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so trying to get all those things going and lined up and uh, 
it was it was a stressful time, um, and, but we got it all done. And and thankfully, the race director from M2O called us up and said, "Hey, I've worked it out to where I've got some paddle boards available for you to rent in Oahu, so you're not going to have to drive cross country and ship a board." And I was ecstatic. I was like, "Oh, that's so awesome! This is all going to work out." And, and so we got that taken care of, so the logistics were a lot easier now. And plus, we, uh, the race director hooked us up with probably the best boat and crew um, that you could possibly yeah, have in this race. They were amazing. Everybody had to have their own boat, follow them with, their, with a boat crew. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just go out and paddle across in the race by yourself. You had to have an accompanying boat. And so that was a big stressor as well, because we didn't know, we, we had no clue who to contact for being our boat captain. So the race director gave me a name, uh, Brian Benton from Oahu, Dive Oahu. And so I called him up, talked to him. He's like, oh yeah, we got this huge 46 foot Newton. It's called uh, Stress Relief and we're a scuba boat. And we've done this before many times. And I was like, okay, cool, let's go. I, you know, I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And so she, the race director hooked us up with a, the best boat yeah. and crew. The biggest boat. <laughs> yeah, down, me too. <laughs> Out there. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. had we had everything we needed to actually make this happen. Yeah. So thanks to Shannon from the M2O, the race director, for hooking us up with the best stuff that you could, be, the best crew, the best logistics you could hope for. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Just it's funny how we had all the best stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had we had everything that we needed Tied to get to get done. So, yeah. So anyway. Um, so so what's next what are we talking about next so we, so we had everything lined up we did our potomac river row it was awesome everything worked out great there and my logistics captain on that on that trip did a great job in making that that come off without a hitch that was podcast 61 if you want to 62 62 if you want to hear that the last recap. podcast yeah. that was 62 so now this is 63 talking about m2 okay so um it came time to go matthew was on board his cousin Connor was gonna go with us. Plus, we had our friends Jason and Tanya Bunger accompanying us. So we had a whole entourage of people going to Hawaii with us. So that was kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. One of the things we had to do was find, well, of course, was was uh, find a place to stay on Molokai. That became a real problem because uh, we ideally should have been in one of the condos at Kapui Beach, which is right there where they, they launched for, for, to start the race. But all of those condos were booked and I didn't want to stay at any of the inland hotels that were further east because I, did, I, I wasn't comfortable with being able to get a ride in time to the race start. Yeah, the, they don't have Uber there. There's like one taxi driver on the whole island. We didn't know about the shuttles. Um, so it was, it was, it would have been a challenge. So I made a decision that we were going to all camp at Papahako beach, which was about a mile and a half south of where the race start was on the beach. So we just had to walk up the beach basically the, the morning of with all our stuff and, and, and launch. It just sounded easy, right? Well, we're just a mile and a half away. That's nothing. And so, uh, we get, so we get into Oahu, we sink up and we're all excited and we catch our, our little puddle jumper flight. And while we're on our, our, the puddle jumpers were a little bit bigger than the last time we mm -hmm. took them. So that wasn't as fun, but it was a little bit bigger, um, playing on molecule or local lele as some people say. So we're on the plane and we and it's just packed full of paddle boarders and they're all like giant trees and really fit. Well, they're and all like, like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're all like these giant shoulders, like swimmers, and giant arms and giant hands. I mean their hands <laughs> were huge. And then once you got to their waist, it was all tiny legs. So it was like we were exact opposite of our builds. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. Like 150 pounds. Yeah, and all like shoulders and arms. Incredible. And so um, we're, you know, I'm, I'm dying to talk to one of the guys. Like, please, I'm dying to pick their brain because I, I talked to one guy earlier and he's like, oh, you'll love it. It's easy. The trade winds are blown. <laughs> that way and you just you just ride the wind and the and the waves and you'll you'll do all right <laughs> i'm like okay cool i was like what about the sharks he's like ah you don't even worry about you you know we had like six shark, shark protector in the knees and 
I was like, okay, cool. I was really <laughs> stoked. Better get on the plane. And uh, I started talking to a gentleman to the left of us. Michael Wong was his name. He was awesome. And he was, he was really cool. And he was like, so what's your plan for when you get out there? What's your strategy? And I was like, well, you know, in practice, we were thinking we would, we would paddle each of us about two to three hours apiece. Everybody on the plane switch. turned around and looked at us when, he, when James said that. Like, <laughs> are you like, insane? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like... You're going to be out there like paddling really, really hard trying to catch those waves and you're going to be exhausted. You, you guys probably need to think about switching every 30 minutes. He's or so. like, and my I'm team like, switches every 10, 15 to 10, 20 minutes. This is world championship guy. <laughs> so like 30 minutes, man. We never, never even thought that we would have to. We, we just go out there and like paddle for like two or three hours and then we, then we would switch off. On the Potomac going practice. On the Potomac. Yeah. And so uh, I was immediately terrified. Like, I immediately realized, oh, my mental model is not up to par where it needs to be right now. And so we started talking to, to, to Michael a little bit more. And then he was like, well, have you guys participated in any races? And we were like, no. <laughs> he was like, oh. <laughs> his eyes about popped out of his yeah. head. And so I, I, that really did it for me. I was like, oh, I really think we got into over our heads here. So uh, I, was, I was really shook up after that plane ride. But anyway, decided to, you know, we're going we're gonna to go through with this and see how it goes. So, so we get over to the other side and we hop on our shuttle and it's nice and warm and it's beautiful and it's Hawaii and it's Molokai and feeling good. And we went to go see Pearl Harbor and all that good stuff. And so we, we felt great. And you know, working on our tans and stuff, and the uh, the driver takes us to Papahaku Beach, and when we get there, it is packed. <laughs> so so incidentally, when we were there before, there was nobody on the entire beach. The nobody entire day. anywhere. Yeah. And so I thought it was just going to be a nice, quiet stay, you yeah. know, and. Plus, we had to pay $100 per person to camp there. I'm never going to pay $100 to camp again. Mm -hmm. Never pay that. That's way too much, Maui County. <laughs> Especially when the campsite is packed. Yeah. So we got there. It's packed. Apparently, there's a funeral. And they're celebrating the life of somebody, a friend or a family or friend. And, which, which was fun. That was kind of cool. It's just that they were up all night partying. And so we were in the farthest part of the campsite that we could go. And these guys are just up all night celebrating mm -hmm. <laughs> the life and death of somebody. And I don't think I slept a wink. Did, did you sleep? No, I was drenching sweat. <laughs> oh, it was, man. It was hot. It was and no wind. Or when we faced the wind yeah. when we set up our tent, and then it just completely changed directions. <laughs> and I've never sweat so much. I've never sweat harder than that. Really? Oh my god, so you started out the day like dehydrated. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so I don't want to be the one telling the whole story. Does anybody else want to you want to jump in and tell someone from that point? Um Yeah, I guess. Start from the campsite. Okay. <laughs> from the campsite the next day. No, oh, yeah. whatever, right there that night when we Okay, so I didn't sleep. <laughs> I lost probably seven pounds. I was cutting weight that night. And uh, <laughs> and then uh we woke up at what four a.m. No, we woke up at like it's three. It's like three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Because we had to be there at like five. The captain four. wanted to pull was anchor at six. six. We started walking at four fifteen. Yeah, you're right. You're been, right. All right, it yeah. might have been like three quarter to four. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, threw on a shirt, <laughs> my race shirt, and my uh, C bands, and then what do we do? And we started hiking in flip-flops two miles. <laughs> Pitch black. The other thing at the campsite was there were all these spiky, uh, what do you call them, plant uh, barbs or something like that. Little spikes Little from uh, spiked plants. And they would go through your flip-flops or your shoes or whatever. And we had an air mattress. And we didn't clear out the campsite. We just put our stuff up. And one of those couple of those spiky things went through our air mattress, so we didn't have any air mattress to sleep on all night. Plus the the cacophony the whole night going on, we, we just kind of just laid there. So I don't think any of us got any sleep. Yeah, me and Connor, we had the sleeping bag, which we 
kind of split just laying on top of it. Yeah. Connor didn't bring anything. He didn't bring a sleeping bag? No. Oh my god. Neither of us had a pillow. We had the sleeping bag, which we both split half of it, (laughs) sleeping on top of it. That was honestly bad because it just made me sweat more. Oh man. Yeah, so we were hot. We woke up hot and probably dehydrated um, from the from the get go. And then we get up, we then we did a workout. (laughs) 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 We did a two mile hike. After the four mile hike yesterday the day before. Uh, Yeah, two mile rock. (laughs) Oh, so the day before I wanted to make sure we knew how to get to the beach. That was all. I just wanted. It, uh, there was a lot of dissension. Well, we went away the, the, the next in the, in the morning anyway. I know, but we came that way coming back. You guys stayed oh, there. I we went a different way back. So we wanted to make sure we knew how to get to the beach from our campsite. So we walked that, and then we walked back, and then we walked there again for the dinner and the pre-race. You know, whatever. And then we walked back that night. So we ended up walking like six, six miles, miles the day before. And Matthew, Connor, and the Buggers just stayed there. Mm-hmm. So that was probably a smart move. You guys got ice cream I don't know. There stuff. was no shade. No shade. They wouldn't let you in the pool or anything. Me and Connor fell asleep by <laughs> the, the one tree. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it was really hot. Yeah. So anyway, all right, we break camp, we go to the bathroom, got headlamps on and everything. Finally, the people are asleep and we're up. And we go out to the road and we start walking to Kapui Beach up the... Uh, I forget the name of the road there, Kalua Koi or something like that. And there's nothing out there, it's just stars everywhere, it's just dark. And that's what I love about, Mol- one of the things I love about Molokai is it's just so dark. There's not a lot of noise pollution, mm-hmm. lot of, not a lot of night pollution, or uh, light pollution. So that was kind of fun, didn't you like that? I mean, yeah, that was kind of a... I didn't mind the hike. <laughs> I, it was a, it was fun. Um, <laughs> It, I wasn't that tired afterwards, but Wait. sorry, continue. So we're hiking towards Kapui Beach, Kapahu, Kapui, something like that, and um, we the the captain uh, told me the night before that he wanted to pull up anchor at six o'clock. The race started at seven thirty, seven thirty, something like that. So we had to get everybody to the beach with all our gear, and then we had to get all our gear out to the boat and before they pulled up anchor at 0600. So, you know, it's pitch black. We, we get to the beach finally, and people are starting to wake up, and there's just race jitters everywhere, and, I'm, and we're, we're all nervous, I'm sure. And, then, and tired because we've already done our workout. <laughs> but it's just, just, just starting. So then we get to the we beach. Did half of our that's true. Half of our morning <laughs> with all our gear and the waves are crashing on the beach and there's a lot of rocks in some of the places. So we had to we had to hunt for a place that didn't have any rocks and we finally found a place that was close to where our boat was anchored and our boat was probably 200 meters offshore or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And so. Um, I, I called up the captain and said, hey, is it all right if I come out and get, get he, because they have a paddle board. I was going to go out and get their paddle board and our paddle board and, and uh, bring it back to shore so we could start taking our stuff out to the boat. So he's like, yeah, that's fine. I think they were partying all night. Yeah, they had to swim our stuff out on the paddle board. <laughs> and it wasn't like a normal board. paddle board. It was a like super was, tiny thing. It, yeah, it was, like a, it was like a surfboard. Yeah. yeah it was a foam board. Yeah. So I, went, I swam out there and uh, I was really struggling. Um, I'm a good swimmer, but that was a tough swim against the waves to, to get out there. Had to get out past the waves, get out to where the boat was anchored, haul myself up on the boat, grab the board. Um, he had a little hand scooter. I forget what they called that. That's a hand scooter. Hand scooter thing that you could put in the Everybody water with a motor on. Scooter. I was like, yeah, scooter. You, swim. <laughs> you just put it in the water and it would it'd drive you out like James Bond. So, uh, but I didn't. I wasn't able to carry that at first. So I just brought our our paddle board back with the other paddle board, and then we took turns uh, putting our gear on this new other foam paddle board and mm-hmm. swimming that out to the boat. And then uh, the bungards went out. So there was a lot of back and forth swimming out to the boat. And by the time that was over, I was <laughs> I was tired. Yeah. Were you tired? Um, right after the swim, I was tired. Like, I could feel, like, it's a far swim. Yeah. <laughs> Especially to do with 
I mean, it wasn't that far, but it took did a it, lot of energy to get did out it three there. times. Yeah, I only did it. I did an out and back once. Mm-hmm. So, so we finally got that all squared away. And so what? I was gonna just do the numbers. Oh, mm-hmm. the one point five mile rock. <laughs> yeah. Six hundred meter swim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did triathlon essentially. <laughs> all before we do a thirty-three mile paddle across the channel. <laughs> All before the sun comes up, even. It was still dark. So we had to swim out to this boat in the dark, uh, which was very interesting, also. It was, the sensory deprivation was kind of weird. So, finally got our board, and then we didn't have the chin thing um, to start off with. And so I panicked. I'm like, oh, I can't, I, I need that chin thing with the chin guard, because without that, it's got to so, hold your head up. The, the yeah, it's around. a chin guard. So you're laying on the board, and you put your, so you can, like, paddle. So if you don't have it, your, like, face is on the board, and it's really hard to see where you're going, and it's hard on your neck and your shoulders. So we didn't have that, and I was starting the race without it, and that, that kind of panicked me a little bit. I didn't know how, I couldn't envision going the full 33 miles without that. You had the hardest part to start the race. Um, but you guys found that on the, on the boat later on and yeah. were able to put it on while we were at, well, once the race had already started. But I started the race without that, which, you know, was no big deal, actually. So the race kicked off at 7. Um, everybody's out at the boat except for the three of us. We go for the prayer. There's a prayer before we start, and we were at the prayer. Caught the um, last 30 seconds of the prayer. <laughs> we, just, we just made it there. Oh, but, but before that, there, there were other people who were, like, way later than us yeah. in getting stuff out there. And there was this one Australian guy who was, like, swimming. You remember him paddling yeah, his? He's the one with the cooler. And the <laughs> he had a cooler and all. And he was doing it all himself, and he was, like, putting it on the board. He almost fell over one time and he managed to ride it and we were like dang how's he doing yeah. that unbelievable and even after we started he was still like messing around in the back i don't know what he was doing he started late I and mean, he just passed he passed everybody once he got going but he was just like uh i'll start when i start <laughs> i was like shoot i wish we were like that so uh, anyway, we got the they, they uh, we were sitting on the beach waiting for the time, and I'm kind of like trying to chat with people next to me, trying to figure out what you know how long you been doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Ten years? Really? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we're from the Potomac River. Right? <laughs> um, and trying to figure out where we go because I had no idea where the how to get. I didn't know what the start was or where to go and. All of a sudden, everybody starts going into the water. I'm like, well, I guess we're going to find out. So I just put my board in the water and just started paddling and following people. And we went out to the right, and there were two buoys that I guess we had to start in between. And there, we went out to the to those buoys, and I'm just like sitting there. And apparently, I didn't realize this, but I was drifting and I was drifting out to sea past the buoys, and these guys were like kept pulling me back from the starting line. And there was a boat going back and forth, like with a guy with a megaphone, like telling everybody what to do and how to draft and not draft or whatever. And then before you know it, we were off and I'm trying to keep up with everybody, but they're just flying past me. And the water is really a lot bumpier, even at the start, than what I was had experienced so far, really. And so immediately I was terrified. I think that's the word I use. I'm te- I was terrified at the start because I realized that this was way over what we had prepared for, mm-hmm. way beyond what we had prepared for, and how and, and just seeing how comfortable are, and people are already on their knees getting after it, and I'm like, I can, I can barely stay on the board right now with the. It wasn't bad at this, you know. It was mm-hmm. just it was just the ocean at the start. So, um, I lasted probably 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, you start. lasted a good, good And wow. I saw you guys pull up, and I'm waving, and I'm like, switch. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we were going two hours, babe. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who went next? It was you, right? Mm-hmm. So you take it away. Yeah, so jump in the water, and it's the transitions are really interesting. So Brian Benson calls Benson. it. Benton, sorry, Brian Benton calls it, and he says, okay. The captain. Cindy, come up to the... Cindy, get ready. Get on deck. And so we get on deck, and there's a crew member there who's, like, sit, sitting with you with a with a buoy and says, all right, he slows down the boat, and he tells you when to jump. So Cindy jumps, all right, jump in the water, and then you have to swim to the paddleboard, to the 
racer, and it's not a short swim. <laughs> so, swim out there, I'm like, whoa, okay, this is really deep. <laughs> and we do the switch, and what I was worried about in transitions the whole time is how do we get the one strap thing off, put it on. The leash. The leash. And uh, so I was really concerned about that, and that's kind of where my head was. And so trying to navigate that while holding on to the board and ducking under waves and the board going over your head, and yeah, that was fun. Um, but we got it sorted, and then James, so then you get on the board, the next paddler gets on the board, so I got on the board. And uh, then the boat captain throws out a lifeline. So the person coming back to the boat swims, catches the lifeline, they pull you in. The crew member, not the captain. Sorry. Semantics. Details. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they don't really care. <laughs> um... So then I start paddling and yeah, it was very intimidating because there were like lots of waves and it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. Once I like took a breath and looked around me and used all of my mindful, we talk about mindfulness a lot in these podcasts. All of my mindfulness skills went into every single time I had to jump off the boat hmm. and to get on the board. And it was a lot of meditative practices and focusing on my breathing and focusing on what was around me and just really being in that moment. And especially when I flipped over a few times, it was mm. very angry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so just keeping, keeping my wherewithal and keeping that calm, sense of calm, I think made a big difference. So mindfulness training really does work. Um, so yeah, paddle along, all happy. And then uh, I was done after about 20 minutes as well. And then... But Brian recognizes it, so he calls it too. He's like, eh, we're going to switch out. And so Matthew was on deck, and... Yeah. What was it like for you the first time you jumped? Um, oh, the jump was fun. I loved tra really? the transition. I thought that was oh, the coolest God. part. Really? That was the scariest part for I me. Love, yeah. Because <laughs> the waves were huge, and you just yeah. dive off the back. And then uh, getting to the board, I, I never thought, I was never concerned about like the actual act of getting the strap on and getting mm. on the board and yeah. paddling. I didn't even think about it until we were actually doing it. And I didn't, I didn't, uh, I don't think I really had any issues with that. The biggest thing for me was it was very difficult paddling out there. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't catch the waves no matter how hard I tried. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I was that slow, but apparently I'm way slower than everybody else. <laughs> The thing was the uh, the wind, the trade winds were going in the direction towards Oahu, so that was good. Mm -hmm. But the waves were not all going. In. There was there were multiple sets of waves. Yeah. Yeah, some were going, going that way. Like, some were going north. Yeah, it felt like some were coming out of well, south. Were kind of, the wind was going towards the island, and then the waves were kind of going like that. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. They were coming like it would push you a little bit north yeah. or south. But if we were west. like when I every time I went. Um, with the beam on the wave, I would flip. And so I made sure yeah. it was like more angled in, but then that was the wrong way. Mm. So it turns out afterwards that wasn't the right way, I think. If we to follow the waves. Yeah. Uh, and, and we were, for some reason, we got it in our heads that we needed to fight against the waves. A well, because we wanted to go towards the big ass island in front of us. <laughs> oh, that! That was against the waves. But, but, but the, the run line was actually. The run line was actually, yeah, perfectly. Yeah, because I think the current was going the other way. So if we followed the waves, we would have kind of just went like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in retrospect, one of the things that we did not have a full awareness of was the run line that yeah. we should have been on. And, and, it, and I think there was a lot of confusion as to how we should be going. Should we be going against the waves or should we go with the waves? And um, we did okay. We, we weren't that far off the run, li run line that we, did, we weren't aware of. <laughs> so the captain did a good job of like keeping us in this general vicinity. Yeah. But um, so it took all of us, even the captain, a few iterations to kind of get in the battle rhythm for how we should do it. Because I, I remember earlier on, he was going further away from the board before he was cutting the engines. Yeah. And so we would have to swim further to get to the board. Yeah. Whereas that later was on, he was doing it shorter. And I remember uh, when he cut the engines, the first time I, I jumped, uh, it just seemed like there was no bottom. Mm -hmm. It felt like, because, you know, depending on where you were with going up and down with the waves, it felt like there was no bottom. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Bottom, what, to the ocean? To the ocean, yeah. And, and then when you hit the water, it just felt see. like you went down forever. Uh, 
Oh, I kind of like really scary scooted movie, yeah. off the end, and I was like, Leroy, I'm scared. He's like, I got you, Cindy. Every time, Leroy, I'm scared. I got you. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Oh, man! <laughs> that was what I was concerned about, jumping into the water. You don't want to lose your sunglasses. <laughs> and I was like, every, I keep jumping every single time doing the same thing. It just adds an extra step. I had to put my sunglasses on. <laughs> and then put the strap on. I didn't even re- realize you had sunglasses on. Yeah, I did for about the first, like, four jumps. Nice. Really? And then I took them off. Yeah. I had I the shark bangs on. <laughs> <laughs> did you wear shark bangs? No. Bands? No. Bands. Shark bands. I, I had the shark bands on. Arm and, and ankle. Did I just you had on my ankle. So this is your ankle. I was really worried about sharks in the beginning. Yeah. And then when we got out there, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I think swimming the luggage out to the boat, that's when we really got out <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <That's> <laughs> we were very that much shark bait. That is probably true. First thing in the morning, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. yeah, but when we were out there with those big waves, I didn't even think about it. And then when we got out into the middle of the channel, I was shocked at how big the waves were. Yeah, that was Were cool. you? Um, how I mean, much they we were rocking, the really? bones, I was like, I didn't know that until the month before. <laughs> I've been, been training this, for this race for two months, and now I find out it's called the channel. <laughs> 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 so I was like, Dana, what? Yeah, I don't expect anything. <laughs> yeah, it's the Kaivi channel, which is also known as the, ch- the channel of bones, as they call it. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the waves were really large. So did you take uh, seasick medicine before you walked? No, I got the C-bands, which I thought was BS. I thought it was like Just pseudoscience. Just the little, the, the wrist thing yeah. with a bead in it. Yeah, right? and then I took a half, well, I took a half of a baby dream of me. Mm. Half? That was just, yeah, because... The I knew the drug dilates my eyes a little bit. Oh right. So I right. just I wanted like a little bit of something, but I didn't yeah. want to be blind. And that's why you need the sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it actually didn't dilate my eyes. No? Okay, yeah. good. I don't even know. And you were fine. I was trying to like break it apart. Like mm-hmm. and I was like shaking because I was nervous and I was like trying to get it just crushed into dust and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't even know. so I don't know how much of the day we snorted it. <laughs> Was this on the boat? Yeah, this was on the boat. Oh my god. Back and back and, back and, back and, <laughs> and then, but the, the wristbands, I think, are legit. Mm. So, really? Yeah. Get them to spawn. Yeah, you recommended to me, to them, you recommended them to me while we were on the boat. <laughs> did you take anything for seasickness? You did not. You didn't take anything. No, and I get I get seasickness, like, just walking down the street and riding in cars, but... <laughs> walking for, down the street? It's true. <laughs> There's been times. I can't ride swings, like swings, because I get sick. Um, but I took a Sudafed because it's an inner ear for me, and the Sudafed just cleared me right up, so I was fine. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. get seasick a lot, too. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Well, Is it inner I, ear for you, or do you know? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I just throw them off. Yeah. <laughs> All right! <laughs> well, I get seasick, too, uh, and I know that, but I did not take anything. Cause I, mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought we'd be all right. I didn't think it's going to be that You got far. seasick on the ocean road, too, though. I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> but um, I got really seasick out there, like. So I, and I thought sitting on the bow of the boat would help, and <laughs> that just made it a lot worse. And I was just blowing chunks really, really hard. And then the last time I got on the boat, the board, and you swam out to me, I'm just retching. <laughs> just yeah, out. we had to clean up the board a little bit. <laughs> and then that was it for me, man. I couldn't get out there. I couldn't even paddle. I was just like. Just you were so all shades sick. of green. You looked so yeah. bad. It was, it was pretty bad. So I was really, really sad. Like, um, I, I don't know that we could have finished had I... So at that point, I took myself out of the, the rotation, and it was just you two guys yeah. and Chris, who was yeah. one of the... Cap, who was one of the... Uh, not the captain, but the crew. Yeah, the- so I'm on the board, right? And not knowing that you quit, and then all of a sudden, Chris jumps out, and I'm like, wait, wait, <laughs> you're not my husband. <laughs> And He's like, no. <laughs> Chris, Chris was just, we probably shouldn't be saying this. Because, well, we got disqualified anyway, so yeah. whatever. But uh, he was this big, big He's a surfer. He's really a surfer strong and a guy. Diver. He's a surfer and a diver. And uh, he just wanted to, you know, fill in Help for me out, as long as yeah. he could. So he jumped in. Yeah, he was great. So he um, he just paddled on like it was, he, he, this is his first time doing it. <laughs> Join the club, right? And he paddled like he'd been doing it for years. Yeah, for he's a like, surf instructor, so. Yeah, that's true. But, but yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I was going to say, the like, when you first came out of the water, like, I knew you were 
I could tell you were worried about it. Because <laughs> the you were, first you, time? Yeah, when you From first start off the board. Yeah, 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 I was definitely I could worried. see it in your face. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like, but you're going to have like a 40-minute rest. So yeah. Yeah. I thought like, okay, after that, like, we'll just get back into the rhythm of it. Because yeah. that's what I was thinking about. Every time I was out there, I was like, this is really hard, but I'm going to get to rest for 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I get out of water, which is a long time. That's a long time yeah. to like, yeah. relax. Yeah. Yeah, and it still ended up like not feeling like enough time. No, no. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then Cindy switched after after you. I guess it was your second time. Uh -huh. And um, then Cindy got on and paddled, and I was like, okay, like we're kind of starting yeah. here. And I walked, and you were up on the front of the boat, and I sat down on the front of the boat. And then, and then, like one of the waves knocked Cindy off, and you fell over. Yeah. And then my dad leans over and just. Oh no! <laughs> and, and that's when I knew it just wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> that's when the jellyfish stung you. No, I think it was the third or fourth. It was after we were switching with Chris that I got stung by the jellyfish. Oh, because yeah. I remember you 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 rolled over and you held your arm up in the air screaming, and I'm throwing up <laughs> over the side. I'm like, oh. God. And then there's Matthew on deck now. <laughs> yeah, it's like this isn't what a what the <laughs> what a finishing team. Looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh. But it was it was an experience, and I loved it all in all. I was extremely disappointed that. It, we were not as we were not anywhere prepared for the caliber of where we needed to be for that. Yeah, but we went out there and we tried, and yeah. we made yeah, it yeah, 15 yeah. miles. And I am proud. I'm very proud of us for doing that. Yeah. And uh, the experience, the whole experience, was awesome. From just being being in Hawaii. I mean, come on. And and with Matthew the, this time. And it with Matthew <laughs> and Connor and the yeah. bunkers, and then going to Dukes and hanging yeah. out there and, you know, looking at all the memorabilia on the wall and thinking about Duke Kahanamoko and all mm -hmm. that he, he had done and him being a, a water person and trying to, like, follow, you know, somewhat in those footsteps and figuring out how they actually, you know, compete out on the big waves and that was yeah. just amazing. I'm just proud of us amazing. for making it halfway. We made it halfway. And, halfway, uh, yeah. And... So the question comes up in my mind a lot. Would I do this? Would I try this again? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we'd, <laughs> if we'd get in again. <laughs> well, know, there's that. <laughs> now that they know we're Keystone Cops. But, um, would I do it again? And I, I, let me ask you guys. Would you do it again? Um, yeah, I'd probably. It'd take... Uh, <laughs> I want to. You but, do want to? But I don't know how I would prepare for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I loved being out there and actually doing it. It was but amazing. Wasn't it's it? not possible to train for it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just uh, I, that boat was amazing. The captain was, the crew was amazing. Yeah. All of those. He I, saved our butts. I just remember all of those oxygen containers along the side because it's a scuba boat. Like just rocking back <laughs> and forth, and those things just like because I'm sitting in the middle of the boat most of the time, trying to keep from retching all over. So I'm just watching these oxygen tanks go up. And just these big rollers coming, you know, towards us and just amazed that you guys were out there riding those giant waves and nothing was happening to you. You were just like, you know, it wasn't, you weren't wiping out left and right. You were staying, staying with it. And the captain was playing like loud 80s rock. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just being out there singing, trying to catch the waves was super fun. Yeah, you were yeah. out there singing for a while. That's right. Uh, yeah, but he yeah he was an amazing captain. Yeah, so. I love that best best captain and crew you could ask for. Yeah. Right? Would you do it again? Hundred percent. Hundred percent, you would. Yeah. Even though you chastised me for signing us up. Well, we <laughs> yes, had a so whole trip. I was mad at you because we had an entire trip planned. Yes. And we'd never paddleboarded a day in our life, and this is a world championship race. So I'm like, well, maybe let's train a little bit and do it next year when we have a chance to train. Yeah. And it's not it's interfering with the seven weeks that I got off of work <laughs> and had to fight to get off of work. <laughs> so that's why I was angry. <laughs> so, yeah. I, but I would absolutely do it again. Um, but as Matthew said, like, how do we train for it? How do we learn how to ride those waves more effectively and, and do better? Uh -huh. so. Yeah, I, I. And now that we know some of the things, like 
I was uh, one of the reasons I had to stop is I was really cold, and I didn't really. Oh uh, yeah, cold? I was freezing, and oh. so staying warmer and I think getting the long sleeve shirt was really smart. Oh yeah, I did have that. I wasn't cold at all. Oh wow. So, I cold yeah, it was really cold. So doing oh. things. So for me, like doing things differently and not potentially walking <laughs> so much the night yeah, 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 yeah. and those kind of things I think that I would have been better prepared or a little bit more physically better prepared and I'm, I'm an athlete but I think that would have helped me out tremendously yeah so 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 would I do it again and I, I'm in agreement with you guys however um, we would need a coach we would need to live on the ocean somewhere so we can train or at least be able ocean. to go there regularly uh, yeah uh, whatever you know yeah. and uh, I mean, ideally, we live in either California or Hawaii, and we have a coach like helping us, and we, you know, someone like a Michael Wong or something yeah. who's done that before. So we're not getting the twenty-minute coaching instruction on the flight. Uh -huh. over here. And maybe oh. we do. And maybe we do a race or two to actually figure yeah, yeah. out what a race or two actually feels totally. like. Mm -hmm. totally. you, can't, you can't find any information about it online. Yeah. Pro and power. You can boring. find two-minute videos of people <laughs> yeah. doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all you can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then, but like if you look up like if you ask any questions like there's no forums or anything yeah mm. so i couldn't find any information other than just wow the actual youtube channel yeah and, and they're just cruising the whole time yeah so. and how teams do transitions i had yeah. no, we had no idea until we actually got out there what yeah. that was like so yeah. maybe somebody will listen to this podcast and <laughs> realize hey this is what the tra team transition is like yeah. You know, we had no idea. And 20 or 30 minutes is probably the, the duration you want to shoot for, not two, not two, two hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh man, it would be so fun to do it again. But there's just a life change would have to happen. I yeah. can order. We'd have to move. Not sure. next year. <laughs> but there are guys who are like 60 and 80 and 100 years old but out that's there. That's no different you know, than rowers who are like 60 and 80 years old right. rowing because they do it all the time and it's part of their lifestyle. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the same so, thing, just a sport. Yeah, how how do you get acclimated to that environment and learning to catch those waves and because yeah. it's all about catching that that bump, those bumps across in yeah. order to get done in eight and hours. Your, your mom has to give birth to you in the ocean. <laughs> 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 yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, like you gotta have to be, you have to be Australian or Hawaiian. Yeah. Or <laughs> a lot of Australians there. It's amazing. Anything else you guys want to talk about well, there? About that? I don't think so. Are you mad at me for getting sick and. Mad? No. Not getting us across? No. The only time I was mad was when it was before you got sick, when you first got off the board. You were mad then? Yeah. Why? Because the first thing you said to me was, like, we're in way too deep. We're in way too deep. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, I I don't put that in my head. I, I, I'm sorry. I should not have said that. No, that's not like, I haven't even gotten on the board yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was bad. I shouldn't have done that. I was just vocalizing how I was feeling at that yeah. point. And, and I, I could tell from the start because... Because no everybody passed me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that... That... <laughs> it was easy to find you for the butt. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, and just like all the splashing and just like I could tell people were just going insane Dang. right yeah. now. Oh, and after it, man, I was like 33 miles and you guys are, and yeah, a lot of them were solo. Yeah. And they were just that's taking what, off. That's like, what I was also so surprised about. They're looking at us like we're stupid for the two hour, three hour thing. But then people are doing it by themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I can't right now. It's just like thinking about getting uh, doing an Ironman when I, before I had done it. Like I can't get my head around doing that solo. Yeah. Much less as part of a team. Yeah. Whoa, just a <laughs> Hercule, Herculean effort. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even. I thought it was like a sport. Like, I don't know what's an analogy. <laughs> I don't know, ping pong. <laughs> ping I was like, pong. like if I was, if I was in high school and someone said, "Hey, come to the ping pong world champions," I'd be like, "Yeah, I can go in there and do do pretty decent." <laughs> and then you actually see these people seven feet from the table, like hitting at ninety miles an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's yeah, like yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. So live and learn. We learned a lot. We had a good time. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm glad we did it. You guys glad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Good. That's a win right there, my book. <laughs> so thanks for listening to our episode 63 of the Dream 10X podcast. We just 
recounted our experiences paddling as first timers in the Molokai to Oahu paddleboard race from Molokai to Oahu. And it was a great experience and we all loved it and it would be good to do it again, but we would have to change our lifestyle in order to get that done, I think. So anyway, we will talk to you next month. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Be a Viking. Get your Viking Rose hoodie, t-shirt, hat, or water bottle and join the adventure. www.vikingrose.com slash